Good evening and welcome. Welcome to our observance of Good Friday here at the Oakland Baptist Church. Thank you for taking the time to be here to honor God through this service. I want to remind you, if you haven't already, to uh, turn off those things we like to call cell phones. Uh, if you would take a moment to do that uh, so we can all fully participate in the service this evening. This evening, along with millions of other people around the world, um, we remember the events that form a pivotal moment in salvation history. A moment when God said, I love you so much and I want to be with you so much that I'm willing to die in order to make that happen. To my mind, there are two primary reasons why Jesus died on the cross. First, uh, it was to take away the sin that blocked us from fully embracing God. Uh, God is pure, perfect, and holy, and we are not. That which is within us needed to be cleansed, to be taken away, so that we could be fully in the presence of God. It's like a poison or a cancer that had to be removed so that we wouldn't pollute God, if you will. Does that make sense? Sin had to be taken away. We had to have freedom from sin. And that's what the cross did. But there was a second reason why Jesus had to die on the cross. So we could be in a restored relationships, restored relationship with God, with our family, friends, neighbors, indeed all of humankind. That is freedom, what I like to call freedom for. Two sides of the same coin, really. Uh, yes, the cross is about freedom from sin, but it's also freedom for something positive. Again, two sides of the same coin, but intricately tied together. God wanted our relationships with him and with others to be healed and made whole so we could walk into the freedom that the cross bought us. Um, the unshackling is only the first half of being free from a prison. You can be unshackled and still sit in a cell, can't you? Sometimes we do that. God in Christ freed us at the cross in an amazing demonstration of sacrificial love. But we also have to step into what we're free for. Amen? What we're free for. Not just from, but for. Now, sadly, there are many people that have not experienced the power of Christ in these twin truths. They have only experienced the first half of freedom. They know Jesus died to take away their sins. They know that they're unshackled from uh, sin and death, but they are also not yet free to walk in the joy of salvation. In fact, it's possible to live out your whole Christian life and still sit in a spiritual prison to be unshackled but not yet free. God wants both for us. Tonight, we want to make this not just a good Friday, but a great Friday. We want to make this a time for you to move out of whatever cell you've been in and to move into a new freedom, not just a freedom from, but a freedom for something that God has for you tonight. The film you're about to see and the original music that you'll hear tonight is called Snapshots. It's an artistic way of getting us to think on and consider how the faith we claim really impacts our lives and our relationships. Like all good art, hopefully, it will get you to think on a deeper level and engage not only your head, but your heart as well. Our hope is that we can draw a connection between the characters that are a part of the Passion account, a part of Scripture, and tie them to modern-day fictional characters that 
perhaps you'll be able to relate to. Now, since we're going to have a, a talk back time and a discussion um, following the presentation this evening, uh, I want you to literally, if it's helpful, take down some notes, but make notes in your mind about what struck you. What did you hear? What touched your heart? What phrase or song lyric? What quote or what resonated in your spirit tonight? Make a note of that because I'm going to be asking you to tell me what you saw. There are no wrong answers. Okay? There are just reflections. No wrong answers, just honest reflections on what you have seen. How you're connecting to the story of the cross tonight so that others can benefit from your thoughts and insight. Um, well, I'll speak. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I don't, uh, I, I want you to think, I want you to make some mental notes because I'm just going to be leading a conversation. Um, we want to hear from you. What, what, what touched your heart tonight so that it can bless all of us? So we can connect the work of the cross, not as just something that happened then, but has an effect on us today. So we want the work of the cross to help walk us into that freedom. Not just freedom from, freedom for. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, tonight we take time to ponder again the sacrifice you made on the cross that freed us from sin, but also frees us for so much more. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to feel tonight. And allow us to ponder again your love poured out fully and completely on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. In this evening's presentation, you will be introduced to three modern individuals. Please keep in mind, these individuals are actors portraying real-life characters. Their stories may be true to life, but do not intentionally represent a specific person. Each individual's sin struggle will correlate with that of a real-life biblical persona present at Christ's crucifixion. Our intention is that you yourself might connect with these individuals, and thusly their biblical counterpart. It is our hope that at the end of this evening, you will find yourself redeemed, forgiven, and in a place of healing at the foot of the cross. Alright, so let me start by asking you, what is your first memory related to God and church? Well, I remember um, going to church as a kid growing up here um, at the church, and I remember Sunday school, and one of the lessons in particular that I really remember is the Ten Commandments, um, when God spoke to Moses on the mount and, and gave us the Ten Commandments, which, you know, are the heart uh, of our Christian faith. I mean, that's where, where everything lies, is in the Ten Commandments. If you don't mind me asking, are you married? Yes, I have a beautiful wife. And do you have any kids? Not yet. Uh, one's on the way. Now, when was the last time you attended church? I mean, you're, you're a regular attender? Oh, I attend church every Sunday. Even when we go on vacation, I make sure my family's up on Sunday and we're at church. Now, when was the last time you personally asked God for forgiveness? Me ask for forgiveness? Yeah. Man, I don't really need to ask for forgiveness. I follow the laws. You know, I follow all the commandments. Um... But I don't know if you've met my sister yet. My sister, man, she, she really needs to ask for forgiveness. The things that she does, I mean, I can't even remember the last time she came to church. How would you define love? Love? I mean, just go back to what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you, you, if you love me, you'll obey what I say. You know, and that's what it's about. you got to obey what he says. So, following the commandments. That's what love is. Do you love your family? Yes. Yes, I do. 
do you love every member of your family? Well, I mean, I don't really love some of their actions, you know, some of the things that they've done. Um, so I'm not really sure, you know, like it, it's, it's hard to say if I really love them or not. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. All right, well, thank you for agreeing to speak to me today. Uh, excuse me? Yeah. Oh, you ready? Oh, yeah, I guess. Let's do this. All right. Let's get it over with. So let me start by asking you, what is your first memory related to God and church? Um, I don't really have any memories, actually. None? No. It's not important to me. Now, how are your relationships at school these days? Um... School? I mean, a lot of people make fun of me for my clothes. They think I'm, like, really weird. And the way I act around people, they think I'm too... Mm, I guess you could say dark. Mm. Which I disagree. I'm just trying to express myself how I feel. But whatever. Would you say you have loving relationships with those in your family? No. I mean, I met this guy, John. Oh my gosh, he's so adorable. And he was just... I met him when I was out with my friend, and as soon as we looked at each other, it clicked. Like, it was like love at first sight, and it was just fantastic, and I never felt like that before, and I finally felt accepted by someone. How was your relationship with your, your mother? Uh, it's been good, and it's been bad, but recently it's been pretty bad. We got in a really bad fight about a week ago, and it's just... I couldn't take it anymore, so I just walked out, and I went to my sister-in-law's. But then I realized, like, her husband was there, and he's, like, all, like, oh, this and that. And he was telling me how, like, my life is, like, falling apart, and I need to get my act together. And it's just, like, hearing that from him is just, like, it makes me not want to be part of that family anymore, and I don't, I can't do it. So where'd you go from there? I just ran out of the house and 
I was walking down the street and I fell into a mud puddle and I just laid there. What'd you do then? I just I just cried. I just broke in tears and I just realized that I let my mom down and my my decisions just took me the wrong direction and I finally prayed for the first time and I never did that before. So you believe in God then? I mean, I know that I I was taught about there's a heaven and a hell, but I never really made that relationship stronger with God to I guess you could say make it a part of my life. Thank you for coming today. My pleasure. So, can you share with us what is your first memory related to God and church? Mm, well, I can remember being in church as a very young girl and really enjoying going to Sunday school and singing. And people were always so kind and nice, and it just gave me good feelings growing up in in, in church. Now, are you married? Um, I was. I was for a long time. Okay. What happened? Um, well, we pretty much had a good marriage as far as being financially secure. We looked like a perfect family on the outside, but really behind closed doors there was a lot missing. God wasn't a part of our marriage and never was. And I think when you start a relationship where he's not the foundation and you build a house and you build a life, then at some point it gets very shaky. When was the last time you attended church? Wow, um, it's been a long time. Um, I'm pretty busy now. So your job is very demanding. Extremely demanding job. Um, and that's a good thing uh, because I like what I do, but it takes time from you know things from my family or from anything else I might want to schedule. And praying, yeah, I guess you could say I, I think about I should talk to God about stuff, but whether I actually do it or not, making time to do that, not really. 
sometimes I think about my son and you know I I I pray about him and his life. And is it just your son? Well, no, I have a daughter as well, and she's. You know, moms and daughters have a kind of a unique relationship. So, yeah, there's probably been some more praying about her, actually. But when it comes to having real close relationships, um, kind of had to be careful about that. I, I got hurt from my marriage. And so now I just don't, I don't let people get too close. Do you think that your relationships with people mirrors your relationship with God? Hmm. Most definitely. Yes, I think probably if I put more time into my relationships with the people around me, they'd be stronger and I'd get more from them. Um, and I know it, it, I think I disappoint some of the people in my life because I don't make time for them, and so I'm sure I do that with God, too. Do you know that God desires a deep love relationship with you? Well, I know that He made me, and I know that He's always right there, um, but as far as having a deep kind of a love relationship, it's, it's kind of hard for me to grasp that. Um, and I have a guarded heart because of what I've been through, so kind of I kind of almost try to keep the, that part of me closed from God, and I know I shouldn't, but that's what happens. can't hear you, Lord, my head is too big to fly. I can't hear you, Lord, my head is too busy with lies. I 
can't hear you, Lord, my head is too busy with life. More than salvation, deeper than religion, relationship requires dedication. prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, 
and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, nor is it easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Um, I thought it was interesting when it said like how people hear the word and then they lose it and then they have the word and then they get scared and lose it and when it mentioned like you have to have a deep root into it it made me think because like like when you're busy like all over the place you definitely feel like so far away I haven't been to church in like four weeks because I'm always working but it's just nice to feel the word again. So that's like what got me thinking and I'm trying to um you know get my feet in the ground at the roots of it and carry it with me, you know. Okay. <laughs> My fake brother. Um, the one thing that spoke to me is I feel like I never, like you were saying, I never asked for forgiveness for what I did. Like when I think of prayer, I think of, well, this person needs that for that, and that person needs that for that. And I try, like in my head, because I'm like, I never go to church, so I can't ask for anything for myself. So I always just think, like, I can ask for other people, and I can thank them for what I have, but the whole just asking for forgiveness, I, it doesn't even cross my mind, but I should. What resonated with me was the mom, that the, the whole relationship issue and how that keeps you from 
developing a deeper relationship with other people, but also a deeper relationship with God. I, I never really thought of it that way, but it's pretty uh, hit home, I guess, for me, because I do find myself praying, but I never get to that next level where I feel like I'm worthy enough or I'm uh, open enough to figure out where the acceptance or where the prayer is being answered. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was pretty, pretty big light bulb moment for me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Others that would like to share? Yes, in the back. To know that God's love is unconditional, and <clears throat> many times when we have relationships with people or friends, sometimes it depends on other things, and if it doesn't work out, the relationship falls apart. So I, I just think love is is the best thing in the world, and God is love. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting the, when it comes to um, reflecting on how uh, God's love was, as we like to say, this big, how much he, he, he spread out his arms, didn't he, on the cross, and, and showed us that um, our sin didn't have to keep us away, that he still loved us despite what we do, and that's a great, that's a great comfort. Yes? Uh, what really spoke to me was when <clears throat> Jesus said the most important things to do is love the Lord and love your neighbor, and I just posted something on Facebook today, just be nice to people, you know. It's the easiest thing to do, and it's the simplest commandment. And to me, it's like kind of like a divine intervention again tonight that God's paying attention to what's on my heart. Because mm -hmm. what's going on in work, people are backfighting and sniping. And, you know, it's like, can't we all just be nice to each other? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, to me, is the most important thing. Just love mm -hmm. God and, and love each other. Be kind mm -hmm. to each other. And in, yeah. um, you know, one of the things that allows us not to get caught in that same backbiting and sniping and all of those things is to know that we're forgiven. And when we know that we're forgiven, then we can be more forgiving of others and we can better display God's love when we do that. Rick, did I see you? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think we all struggle with, I know I've struggled with, is that, that intimacy with God. I, I mean, I know he loves me. I know he's there for me. I, I, it's just that sometimes when we get caught up in the problems of today, whatever you're going through, whether it's working with your children or the inner relationships and all like that, it's one of those things that actually draws us away from that instead of to him because we get caught up in all of our personal things that go on mm -hmm. and and so it's it's really part of the distraction that's on the earth today there's not you i don't know i don't find many places other than in church where i'm encouraged to move toward god or that i, I would recognize that he is actually moving towards me mm -hmm. as that loving father and and so I guess because of the society we live in, it is so critical to be in a church kind of environment where it sort of helps me move away from all the problems out there that I left in my car and into the reality of I need this, you know, and then I can take this home and try to do it at home. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, unless you're really a lot better than me, the phone rings or something, and there's a lot of distractions. So our biggest battle is with that. But, God, but I just want to share in my heart, I believe this, even though I don't always practice it, God is waiting for me to come and for him to embrace me. I just have to do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, back over here. Um, one of the things, uh, the, when the brother character was being interviewed and he said, um, have you seen my sister? <laughs> Forget the fact that his sister was my daughter, but that's another story. <laughs> but um, 
it just it just made me think about how we so often look at everybody else and say, huh, she's doing that wrong, she's doing that wrong, or mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that, and then but we never ever look in that mirror and 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 know and ask like like the young lady up front said, mm -hmm. ask for the forgiveness for ourselves, mm -hmm. or to realize that we actually need that forgiveness, which is why we are all here today on Good Friday, because we all need that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, one of the things you said before the video was how Jesus took um, like the freedom to like new, like a better life kind of thing. And one of the things that you mentioned a while ago, it might have been last Good Friday service actually, mm -hmm. is that the cross was initially, it was kind of like the electric chair. And it was a symbol of death and how that through Jesus' death, he turned something so bad into a symbol of love. Mm -hmm. And I really like just seeing that up there. It also reminded me, it's just like he took something that was completely bad, also like our sin, and me turned it into love, which is the ultimate thing for us. So mm -hmm. I just thought that that was cool. Thank you for, for bringing us back to that, um, that core truth that this cross was a symbol of death, the worst kind of death, but God changed it into a symbol of life. And when we look at the things that we deal with that are some of the most difficult things, knowing that God changed that into the ultimate symbol of love and hope, he can take the things that we have and change them too. He can change them. And that, I hope, is an encouragement to you tonight as well. Thank you, Corey. Anybody else have a thought that you'd like to share? Um, back over here. I just wanted to add one more thing. I think a lot of people, I know I do this, you jump in with both feet and you put all of your trust and your, your world into someone else or other people or things and you almost do the opposite, or you are doing the opposite of what you should be doing, which is putting your faith in God. And to go back to the moment with the mom, you know, she, put all her trust and faith in someone else and that person, it didn't work out. And instead of going to God, she's afraid now. And I, that mm -hmm. just goes back to my original point, which is the, where you're afraid to have a relationship, but we, we do it backwards. Mm -hmm. And you know, the word that, one of the words that stuck out to me, I don't know if to anybody else was the word guarded. Did you hear that word? Um, life can make us guarded and when we get guarded we can actually shut off the love that God wants to show to us the forgiveness that he wants to extend to us our guardedness can keep that away and when we put our faith and trust in other things um, they will always disappoint us and um, I wanted to share a um, couple of interesting things that crossed my mind this week. Um, as I thought about these, these different characters, the, the chief priest, the, um, the sister, the mother. Um, but there was something interesting that, that came to me this week. As some of you know, um, we had a, a birth in the church to celebrate. Uh, the DeBracchios uh, had a little baby girl. Um, and um, as I went out to the hospital and, and visited with them, um, I thought about this sort of interesting parallel that, um, that out of love and through cutting and blood and all of this stuff that goes with a C-section, new life came. <laughs> and I thought, what an interesting parallel that 
out of love and through all this pain, emerged new life. And that seemed an interesting parallel to the cross and to what Jesus went through on Good Friday and, and through pain gave birth to love and forgiveness that we cherish so much. And it was just an interesting thought that I wanted to, to share with you tonight. Um, also, um, when you think about this idea of forgiveness, um, it isn't just a one-time result of the cross, something that you do once. It's something that has to be repeated over and over again. We have to. Yes, we receive our salvation, but then what? As the front of your bulletin says today, what from Yes, I have received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. What between now and heaven? Do we just sit, twiddle our thumbs? Or is God wanting to do something deeper in us and allow uh, His forgiveness to penetrate the barriers that we put up and allow us to restore relationships? Everything won't be healed. Everything won't be fixed. But God can fix. God can heal a lot more than we let him fix and heal. If we open up that door, if we say, you know what, it's, it's not that person over there. Oh, you know, that person in the film reminded me of such and such or thus and so. <laughs> no, as the old hymn goes, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, Right? It's, it's, it's me. On the back of your um, bulletin tonight, we provided some additional thoughts for reflection. Oh, I think there's another hand over here, Randy. Uh, before I go to that, uh, Will's got his hand up over here. I was just contemplating both between uh, the final um, song that was being sung and, and uh, the reading of the uh, love chapter, actually, by Tina again. And I'm um, mm -hmm. just kind of contemplating between all of this, actually, because even though the Bible does instruct us on things, but it's interesting that we're not capable of doing any of them, you might say properly, you might say, without that love first, actually, accepting mm -hmm. that love first, because it's through God that all these things are possible, you know? That's right. But the, but the thing is, yeah, but, but it all comes down to accepting that forgiveness first mm -hmm. so that you can be the forgiving person he wants you to be, though. Mm -hmm. It starts with you, you mm -hmm. know, your choice, you know? And, yeah. uh, and, to, and to think that, you know, that Jesus was willing to go through all that to show that he... I mean, it loved us, actually, because even in human flesh, you can't comprehend just how big that love is, actually, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, not, I mean, and, and the spreading of arms is all you can do, though, mm -hmm. but it's still not enough to really comprehend it, you know? Mm -hmm. And to know that you are forgiven, no matter how many times you sin, no matter how many times, you know, because you might think that it might be a bad thing at first, actually, when you go through that cycle all over again. But that's the part of the circle of life, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you go back and forth, you know, and stuff. But, but even with that, the love is still so too much big to comprehend. Actually, that he, of course, he can forgive as well. Yeah. And and you can get back on track if you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Will. And just to pick up on something that that Will said briefly, um, Jesus taught us that we had to empty ourselves before he could fill us. Uh, sometimes we have to let go of things before we can grasp what he has for us. We have to be emptied, and that's part of what the cross was, was an emptying, showing us that we had to be emptied so that God then could come and fill us. On the back of your bulletin tonight, um, there are some things we wanted you to take home with you. They are um, questions that we hope will help you think a little bit more deeply about Good Friday and 
the road of the cross that gets us to the resurrection. Um, and each phrase begins with, for love, Jesus was willing to, or for love, Jesus did this. And then it asks a question like, um, am I willing to give up the things that I hold most dear in life to follow God's call? And for love, Jesus did. And so I hope that you will take these home and that you will, before you lay your head down on your pillow tonight, read through them. Uh, they're challenging. Um, it isn't enough to, for us to say, wow, isn't this a great thing Jesus did for us? The more to me is saying, because of this great thing that Jesus has done on the cross for us, what can I then do to share that extreme measure of love with others and imitate Jesus in the process. So I hope that you will take these home and consider them. And also, I encourage you to jot down um, this scripture passage, Romans 6.3. It's where Paul says that we are baptized into his death. I want you to think about what that means. What does it mean to be baptized into his death? I'm not going to give you an answer. Right? I want you to take that home, that scripture home, and, and think about that. What does it mean to me tonight to be baptized into his death? And finally, um, I want you to think about the word passion. The account of Jesus from the Last Supper through his crucifixion and ultimately to his resurrection uh, is often called the passion narrative, right? What is that passion? Well, passion is suffering. Passion can be an intense or driving feeling. It can be ardent affection, it can be love. We describe what Jesus did on the cross as passion. Think about all of the aspects of Jesus' passion as you think about these questions and as you prepare for the resurrection day. Uh, as I said earlier, um, it's important for us to remember that there cannot be a resurrection without a cross. There can't be a crown without a crown of thorns, as the poster of the story so beautifully depicts. There is a crown, but the shadow around that crown is a crown of thorns, and they must go together. Let's pray. Lord, as we consider your great love for us, as we reflect again on this Good Friday, as we think about what your love and forgiveness might mean as it applies to our lives today and every day. Lord, we ask that um, you would stir us that we would take this time of reflection and turn it into actions that demonstrate our love back. Remind us again, Lord, that there is always forgiveness at your cross, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, that you are ready to embrace us and that Lord, it's, it's not how we start, but how we finish and that we finish hand in hand with you. So take us from this place tonight and continue to speak to our hearts through that scripture passage in Romans, through the things that we have seen tonight. And Lord, transform us 
like the chrysalis so we can emerge with the butterfly on Easter morning. Send us forth with your peace tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you as you go this evening.